<clears throat> Five more creepy stories. Number one. This happened to me back in 2015. I was 16 at the time when this took place. I lived in a small town in Maryland, in Maryland, yet nothing bad happens here in our safe haven. My name is Jesse and I am a girl who has a lot of anxiety about everything, yet my friends were coming over to hang out at my place for the weekends and sleep over since it was a Friday evening. I will call my friends Jack, Sally, and Daisy. They are pretty cool friends. They always stick up to me if someone is bullying me and stuff like that. So they are my role models big time. They always help me with my assignments and projects for school and come over and play Xbox with me at my house and sleep over on the weekends, which my parents did not mind. They were always working. One of my friends suggested I order a pizza and all of my friends agreed that that would be a very great idea since we didn't have anything in the house but one hot pocket, two oranges, and three slices of bread. LOL. We are not struggling or poor or, any, or, poor or anything. No offense to anybody that has to go through that situation. My parents just always work and they never have time to do those sorts of things like go to the grocery store. Well, they didn't abandon me, but they still go to the grocery store. And since I can't drive, I am pretty much living a home life besides taking the bus to school every day and back. We decided that we would order, we would all order pizza when the, when the, when the person on the phone said that the pies would take, be ready in about 45 minutes, I said thank you. The person on the phone took my order and said that I would have to come and pick up because one of the pizza guy's car broke down. I told the person on the phone if there were any other pizza delivery guys that could come to our house, but she said, I'm sorry, but we only have one pizza delivery guy, but his car broke down two weeks ago, so people have been having to come and pick up their order instead of us deliver it to them, and we only have one pizza guy, and... I walk to work, so if I had a car, I would come to you guys. However, I don't, so I apologize. Yeah, right. I am very sorry for the inconvenience. If you would like to cancel the order, you can do so. I told her it is fine and the food should be ready by the time I get there. Now, I live on the outskirts, on the outskirts of town, but pretty much in the middle of nowhere, so Pizza Hut was about an hour and 30 minute drive. So getting back and forth, it's pretty much two hours and 30 minutes. But I did not hesitate and I told my friends I would be back in two hours. I wish my friends came with me to the Pizza Hut, but they agreed to stay at my house and play Xbox until I got back. So let's get to where things got creepy. I went on my... I went on my merry way driving down the road listening to some hip-hop on my radio. It was a cool autumn night as I rolled my window down. I could feel the crisp fall air and the beautiful night sky glimmer and shine upon me while I was driving down the road heading up 70, trying at least to be consistent with my speed at a fast pace, with a fast pace. I was just having a good, a good time minding my own business when I have a curiosity to look in my rearview mirror. And I saw a car coming up the hill with its shiny yellow lights coming down the hill behind me, but however, it did not seem right. I mean, the car was fine going at a reasonable speed, but the driver turned his headlights off and probably his rear lights for some unknown reason, which is pretty odd. I felt kind of on edge as I had a feeling in my stomach that something wasn't right about this. I forgot about it and didn't think nothing of it, but I still thought that that was kind of strange for a person to have his headlights off in the middle of the night when it is dark outside because what it's even more strange is that this is a forest road with no street lights and this is way out in the country but maybe his headlights went out like I said I did not think nothing of it I forgot about it and didn't think nothing of it but I still thought it was kind of strange for a person to have his headlights off in the middle of the night when it is dark outside because it's even, what's even more strange is that this is a forest road. <clears throat> so, a few minutes later I was shocked to see the truck with no headlights. And it was passing right past me. And 
Now I was behind him, but he started to slow down. So this dude, I can tell his car was a white Cadillac as he passed right past me. He was wearing a black hat and a black tuxedo, smoking a cigar, staring at me. I realized this dude was probably just being a dick playing games with me or something. I don't know. what. He was maybe on some serious drugs, and I don't want to know. Let me get back to the part where I was talking about him slowing down when I saw his head just past him like he... So... I went into the other lane as he passed me, but after I passed him, he was speeding up to me. At this point, I started to get scared and very desperate on what I had to do to try to call one of my friends or something like that, but none of them picked up their phone and I said, great. Now this might be the night I die, so if something happens to me, they better be very, very sorry. Maybe one of their phones died and they're charging it, I don't know. But I just tried to brave it out. This dude was following me for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, even 30 minutes. But right when I got to 30 minutes, I will never forget what happened next. It still gives me shivers. The dude passed me again, but when I looked on the left hand side where he passed me, I saw him waving the most evilest smile I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Goosebumps ran up my body from the knee down as I saw the car vanished out of sight. I was completely baffled at what I saw. My vision became blurry and I was lightheaded. I finally made it to the pizza place, got to the pizza, and went back home. But I was driving and I just had to hope and pray that I will never see that car again. But I guess prayers don't help anything in some degree. Maybe I was, wasn't being so confident about it, since I had my doubts about it. I think I was dreading the moment still, where all of this took place, and I'm surprised I didn't pass out and crash into something. I don't believe in the paranormal or ghosts, but now I do. I've never seen a car pass me and vanish out of sight like that ever in my life, or ride behind me and then pass me and then make him ride, make me ride behind him with no headlights. It, I just can't explain it. So, what happened next gives me more goosebumps and shivers and chills and you name it. The whole nine, I witnessed a ghost. Pretty much history of the past. I saw the exact same car speeding up, but it was, wasn't following me. It was going to, to the direction of the pizza place. Uh, but before it passed me, it swerved onto the side of the road and almost hit a tree right before it hit the tree. The car vanished out of sight, and I could not, and I could hear screaming. But this, but why did this ghost want to follow me? Didn't want to feel, wanted me to feel the same misery that it felt when it crashed into a tree. Maybe it wanted my car to hit his car, so my car can hydroplane and swerve onto into the trees. I told my friends about it and they were very concerned. One of my friends told me that there was a bad crash <clears throat> 10 years ago on that very same road that leads to town. It's only on certain hours of the night where you can see the ghost in the car that vanishes. So that is why I saw a car with no headlights. Why no headlights? That might have been part of the crash. Jack told me that it was his uncle that was going on the business trip but he had car trouble so his headlights stopped working and he could not see so he swerved onto the side of the road and crashed into a tree. I had no words after realizing the truth behind this scary story. That one of my friends, family members, could be involved in this story. I think next time when I go out late into town one of my friends can be with me. Number two. I was getting off of work one day and decided to go to a convenience store to get me a snack and a drink since that was a pretty long day. And I want to get this and I wanted to get this day over with and I'm glad the day was gone. I can remember everything that day. I woke up sneezing and coughing, spilling coffee on my shirt, tripping and falling and stubbing my toe, falling in the shower, my puppies having diarrhea everywhere. 
it was a really stressful day and I haven't had a lot of income coming to me lately so we were kind of struggling. Also I went to the convenience store to get some gas so I thought I did all of my business. I started to drive off and my peripheral vision I could see something wasn't right. I saw what looked to be a woman staring at me with this evil look as like a she was a criminal or something or I took the candy or it was like a look of taking candy from a baby I can see in her pocket she had a knife and took it out and was running towards my car to get at least one try to stab me for one of my tires I was shocked to see all of this happen and this girl looked to be a dwarf and it was kind of funny but horrifying at the same time but this girl looked to me, looked to be on drugs, so I floored it out of there and never thought about it again or experienced anything terrifying like that ever again. So let's just say I didn't go back to that same store. Number three. I am a young adult, I am a young adult who lives in southern Louisiana. And I was going on a road trip with my friends to Florida on my summer break. We had a great time talking and laughing about the good times we had in the past and all of the stupid stuff we did in school. Generally, it was a good time. We went to Florida and planned our one-week vacation by renting a hotel room and walking the pier, have a few drinks, walk on the shore, put our feet in the water and, and, and in the sand, in the ocean water, and ride the slingshot, and do all kinds of other fun stuff that people normally typically do on a beat on a vacation at the beach. Honestly, when I was a little kid, I hated rides, but now I like them. Honestly, it was the best time ever, and we were having so much fun, we forgot about everything around us. We took a few pictures at the beach, and some of the pictures on the beach looked odd. On the left corner was a picture of me and all of my friends, and I could see a white orb shining way out in the ocean. Honestly, it looked like a UFO. Then the other images were a white orb of the white orb really gave me shivers as I was looking at the last picture. It was a face of a man, but his eyes were rolled back. All I saw was white milky eyeballs with a huge bloody smile on his face. Yes, some kind of some of the pictures did not have whatever this was. But I already know this was probably a ghost. Whatever it was, I don't want to know. We took a lot of pictures on our vacation to build up all of our memories as friends, and I am glad we never saw the white orb, nor the face, ever again. Hallelujah. Number four. So we were staying at a hotel in Vermont with my family as I took a vacation for Christmas to stay with some of my uncles and grandparents and aunts and cousins and all that, etc. with my family. As most of my family are in Vermont and live in Vermont. Same thing. I honestly loved the trip to Vermont as it was a beautiful sight to see all of the mountains and wildlife around us. I'm a type of guy that goes hunting and fishing year round, honestly. I just love nature itself. If it is not part of the year we're hunting is acceptable, I usually just fish at a small pond or at a lake or just take a nature walk, which was pretty much hiking on my side of the tracks. Now, our grandparents and uncles had a bigger house and had a much smaller house, I mean, not a bigger house, a smaller house. And if they had a bigger house, they would let us stay, but since they really had no furniture in the house, and it was pretty much a cracker box, we had to end up staying at a hotel on the edge of town that... town. The town that they lived in. We got all of our luggage and unpacked in the hotel room, and when then we left the hotel to get something to eat, and thank God for fast food, because we were really hungry. We went to visit our family for a little while, then we came back to the hotel. We were going back to our room in the hotel as we took the elevator up to the floor three. However, as we were in the elevator, there was a strange man mumbling something to himself, with his head down looking at the floor. I could not tell what he was saying, but on the lines of shirts, pants, tie, braces, bracelet, necklace, and he just kept repeating the same six words over and over again, and I 
saw there was something else I did not catch as he was singing some lo lullaby that was in some kind of foreign language. Honestly, he gave out some creepy vibes, I tell you. And all of us were ready to get the hell out of the elevator. After we got out of the elevator, the man just stood there either waiting for somebody or going on another floor and I am glad he did not follow us but as we gained hope we lost hope. We looked back to see all of our hearts losing confidence as we were starting to get nervous as he was walking towards us, not running but walking and all of us did not think nothing of it but just thought that he was having problems with his own life and he did not know how to embrace himself or control himself as maybe there was something wrong with him or he just has special needs or something and maybe he did not have the mindset of causing any harm to anybody. I mean, he looked like he was going towards the vending machine trying to not look too suspicious. Now, going to get a snack or drink from a vending machine isn't too strange, so we brushed it off. However, while he was doing what he was doing, I was he was staring at us. He looked pissed off for some reason, but he brushed, we brushed it off and went inside our hotel room and washed up, watching a little TV and to get some sleep. We got some sleep, finally called it a night about midnight until three hours later at 3 a.m. I woke up to a loud bang on the door of our room. There was somebody outside knocking on the door. I honestly thought, who could it be knocking on our door at 3 a.m. in the fucking morning? I was kind of grumpy about it, yet I answered the door, but I saw nothing when I, when I opened it. I looked out the hall and I saw nothing. I went to go use the restroom and I forgot about it, and forgot about who was knocking, and maybe they were just, they just went to another room because they got the wrong door, or, or whatever it is, it can't be too serious, right? I stopped worrying about it and closed my eyes, and eventually I drifted off again only to wake up at 4.30 a.m. to a strange sound once again coming from the corner, of, but now coming from the corner of the room. Now my parents were in the other room because we have two sections that section off to my mom, or to, to, to my room. And there was a closet to the door of the hallway. Now I stopped to it for a second, but I did not go back to sleep as I listened for the sound. It did not take a second later to hear the sound once again. I looked to the left of my bed where the door is. Nothing. I heard the noise coming from under my bed. BAM! I was screaming batshit as I saw a naked man under my bed. I was screaming so bad my parents came over to my room to see what was going on and I told them that there was a naked man and he just ran out of my room. He was under my bed. I know I was a very attractive young girl but this man, he was like in his 50s or late 60s. He looked so old. And the most creepy thing is it hit me that was the same man we saw from the elevator. We called the front desk to confirm what happened and they called the police. The police came to our room to look for any suspicious activity and or anything, any belongings that he left behind. And to look around the whole entire hotel to see where the man is. And they finally found him, however, they went inside the woods in the back of the hotel and since he was out, and since this was out in the pits, they finally found the guy crouching and hiding over a tree, exposing all of his genitals. Well, I'm just glad that nothing worse could have happened. And I am glad they caught him because he could have done anything darker than hiding under my bed naked. I could have been killed or raped. The police wanted to do an interview about it, yet I just disagreed and told them I was too embarrassed because I had pajamas on and my hair was a mess. They honestly want to put a story well, they always they obviously wanted to put the story on the news. I guess that's why nobody really knows the story. They never saw any other creepy people or a hotel at a hotel or anything out of the ordinary happen to us ever again on on our story for the rest of the time and the trip was fun, but I kind of got overwhelmed about the whole experience with the naked guy. I think I will stay clear of staying in a hotel for a while, but if I have to, because of an important situation in my life, I will do so. Number five. I got up to use the restroom at 2 a.m. one night 
I did my business and walked back to my room, but I froze in the middle of the hallway as I had to look downstairs where the living room is. And I saw... I was looking over the pier of my upstairs hallway, looking down to the living room. Possibly my dad was sitting on the couch watching TV, eating potato chips and drinking soda at 2 a.m. What the fuck? Okay, maybe he just wanted to do what he wanted to do. I mean, it's not strange, but it's just so late to be eating, eating. But I thought whatever. I wanted to make sure my dad was in the living room because it hit me that my dad and mom were out of town for a business trip. So I was just wanting to make sure, so I texted my dad and said, Hey, are you up? Because I see you on the couch. Now, I didn't want to simply yell over there. I don't know why. I, I was a weird kid. He was sitting right downstairs on the couch, but I didn't yell. I texted him. I was just a freak. I don't know. But um, he said, No, I'm still in California. I won't be home for another three weeks. And neither your mom. What do you mean you see somebody on the couch? My dad asked. My heart froze as I told my dad there was somebody on the couch and the man that was sitting on the couch turned his head so fast at me with an evil smile with the craziest I've ever seen as he got up from his seat and ran up the stairs towards me making weird noises like an Indian and hitting his chest like a gorilla with a gun in his pocket. He tried to shoot me and what I did next was very brave as I ran into my bath in my bedroom window and pushed my whole body out of my window, breaking every little piece of glass. I did not care if I had a broken leg or anything like that. I was not going to get killed by some psycho killing me. If I got killed jumping out of a window, it would be a good reason for saving my life. And I am immediately, I immediately called the cops and thank God I had my cell phone in my pocket. Because by the time, I really needed it. So, the police came to my house instantly, and they were just right down the street patrolling the area, and the officer named Brian was a really nice guy, and he talked to me, and he tried to calm me down from the situation. They finally found the guy a day later trying to punch somebody in the face as someone else called the cops on him. They arrested him and took him to jail. Turns out he was on multiple drugs and had serious issues, and tons of history of being in a psychiatric court. I'm just glad I had the guts to do what I had to do that night to save my life. I'm glad I survived because I wasn't because if it wasn't up to me, I would have been dead. And that man was everywhere. I mean, he was the Tasmanian devil. He made my whole house a tornado in my house, throwing things and yelling to the top of his lungs, screaming, "I want to kill you!" and yelling at me. Let's just say nothing else happened like that again, and I moved out of my parents' house a month later. It was on my mind, and still, and I still felt like I was being watched, or like someone was in the house, even though there was nobody being being there, and being home alone all the time really made it worse, and I'm just glad that the guy went to jail and got what he deserved.